Hi, I'm Bob. In the panel data sample, we have observed each individual multiple times. The structure allows us to use more advanced methods to estimate panel data models than the standard OLS. In the panel data context, we can make more complicated assumptions about the error term. We assume that the error term contains three components, the time invariant component, the individual invariant component, and the random component. The time invariant component captures the unobserved factors that are individual specific and do not change over time, such as genetic characteristics and qualities. They are different across individuals, but constant over time for the same individual. It is also called the individual fixed effect. The individual invariant component captures the time-varying factors, such as the government policy or economic environment, that change over time, but affect all individuals the same way. It is also called the time fixed effect. The random component represents the other unobserved factors that are different across individuals and change over time. The purpose of dividing the panel data error term into three parts is that we allow the time invariant component and the individual invariant component of the error term to be correlated with the explanatory variables. And we can still obtain consistent estimates using panel data methods. We can accomplish it with the panel data structure. It is impossible with the cross-sectional data. In the last video, we have learned the first differencing method. In this video, let's explore the dummy variables method. The idea of the dummy variables method is to estimate the individual fixed effects and the time fixed effects directly, along with the coefficients of the explanatory variables, beta. We use the individual dummies to capture the individual fixed effects and the time dummies to capture the time fixed effects. To use the dummy variables method, we need more assumptions. Since now the individual fixed components and the time fixed components are explicitly estimated as regressors, they should be uncorrelated with the random component, epsilon. The advantage of using the dummy variables method is that we obtain the estimates for the individual specific and time specific effects and the R square will be high. One drawback of the dummy variables method is that too many coefficients are estimated. It's not very practical for panel datasets with many individuals. In our sample, there were more than 4,000 workers. We can type quietly regress, followed by the outcome variable log wage, the explanatory variable Julian, the individual dummies, and the time dummies. I add quietly before the regress command to avoid filling the screen with regression output. It takes quite a while to run the dummy variable method model for estimating more than 4,000 coefficients. The estimate for the Julian is stored in the scalar underscore b one dot Julian. It implies that the Julian members and 5% more than the non-Julian members on average after controlling the individual and time fixed effects. We usually apply the dummy variables method only to the time fixed effects with just a few time dummies to be estimated and use the time demealing method we will discuss in the next video to account for the individual fixed effects. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.